And um, I think with that, we've really got a good perspective of the transition and the paradigm shift that we're in. And sometimes it can be difficult to grasp something that is using new narratives, that is giving us new tools. But a bit like Martha and both Peter said, it's also about shifting our own mindset, not only as a leader, as a company CEO or management, but also as a human being to really start to look at maybe other news feeds. If you find this interesting, start diving into sort of the transition and paradigm shift that we're going into. That, in a sense, is a supply chain. Our whole life is, in a sense, a supply chain because we're all interconnected um, in a chain in one way or another. But let's dive into more stats and figures and really look at how we're doing when it comes to supply chain sustainability on a Nordic level. Because we're going to learn about the latest um, report that Optilon has made. Um, it's the Nordic State of Supply Chain Sustainability that was conducted through the whole Nordics. And uh, Optilon interviewed 400 companies on their approach to sustainability. So hopefully this will give us some insight. And to talk more about this, I say a warm welcome to Alice Sinberg Henriksen, who is thought leader and supply chain sustainability developer at Optilon. Alice, come up on stage. Welcome. So we're going to dive into the report that Optilon has conducted. Yes. Um, I thought we would start with two polls just yeah. to get the viewers' interaction. Yeah, let's um, do that. Just to sort of feel the temperature. So let's take the first poll, and that's, do you have sustainability goals in your company? Hopefully we'll get one poll that rises like a rocket. Can we get the options as well? A yes or a no. Do you have sustainability goals in your company? Hopefully, the poll will be in your browser at this moment. Oh, looking good. Looking good. Yes. So we have around 14% who yet do not have it. So maybe we can motivate them yeah. um, a bit on what they should be thinking about. Actually, it looks a lot like the report we have just uh, published because actually it showed that four out of five companies in the Nordics do have sustainability um, mm -hmm. the targets. So, uh, yeah. So that's uh, quite uh, interesting that uh, the audience is actually uh, looking a lot like uh, the companies that we interviewed. Yeah, so sort of hopefully after this conference you will be incentivized, the 14% who maybe, and it's maybe not having not having the will, but maybe having the knowledge on how to actually implement yeah. sustainability targets. Yeah. I mean, the great thing is also you can download the report and also see what others do actually. Mm. Uh, so we can, it's a very pragmatic and uh, practical report. Um, so uh, it's possible to learn. And that's yeah. also the reason why we as thought leaders here in the Nordics on not only sustainability and but also supply chain mm. have uh, produced this report. We, we, of course, want to urge these companies mm. that are still lagging a little bit behind to, to take on and help solve this big problem. Because yeah. uh, we also heard both Martha and uh, Peter talk about the challenges we have, uh, the paradigm shift that we are seeing. And we all know that if we are not able to... Um, um, you know, continue uh, as a company in the right direction, mm -hmm. we're losing out on competition. And mm. yeah, sustainability is for sure um, part of being competitive uh, in the future. Mm. And I guess also with every change, you have to have people who are at the forefront who then will bring the followers along because then exactly, they get a perspective yeah. to yeah. it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a good number for, for the Nordics. But Definitely. I guess we also have a, a second uh, yes, poll. Yes, a second poll. And that is, does your company have a target for eliminating emissions? Does your company have a target, a goal, or a set agenda for eliminating emissions? Yes or no? Mm, as expected, probably a yeah, slightly. How would you comment this? Alice? I would say that this audience is doing really good because our report actually showed that 50% of the companies in the Nordics they have uh, targets for reducing emissions. So it's looking very good. Thumbs up for the audience. But once again, sort of, I, I mean, the ones who are lagging behind, which I think is a good word, because I'm sure the incentive is there. It's more about, you know, probably costs, intuition, and so forth. How, how do we incentivize them to start looking? I mean, what strategy is needed to start to look in your company to actually look at eliminating emissions and setting a target for that? Yeah. I mean, to, to set a target is, of course, uh, really essential to understand the business, mm. um, to, to really understand, you know, what, for instance, for manufacturing companies, it's essential to understand how much of our, so to say, emissions measured in greenhouse gas emissions 
uh, is placed in either scope one, scope two, or scope three. Uh, what we know is that um, manufacturing companies quite often have a large supplier base, and if, if these companies are not working with the supplier base, uh, they are most probably not working with the majority of the missions either. Mm -hmm. So uh, the inc incentivization, you could say, is is really to 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 understand uh, the business, understand the supply chain, at uh, both the negative and the positive uh, impacts, because mm. uh, that can drive progress within this area. And as I said before, competitiveness. Mm. Mm. And also, you mentioned scoop. I'm just thinking, if not everyone is sort yeah. of acquainted with the terminology. Yeah, you measure your emissions in three different um, uh, types. Scope one and two are basically the emissions that you can manage inside your company. Mm. Um, and typically, scope three is outside your company. So that is with your suppliers. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what I also uh, know from the report is that uh, one third of, uh, of the companies work uh, with all three scopes. Mm. But the challenge is actually that one third of the companies don't work with any of the scopes at all. Mm. So even though they have emission targets, it's uh, quite worrying that, that they still haven't started the journey. Yeah. And another finding that we know, because we do have extensive experience within both, of course, su uh, supply chain, but also sustainability, and if you have to work with all of your suppliers, let's mm. say you are a production company, you have uh, maybe 5,000, maybe 10,000 suppliers, and you haven't started the journey, then we know uh, of experience that it takes four years maybe to oh, wow. get the visibility yeah, uh, and traceability in those numbers. So if you haven't started and you have a target of you know, net zero in 2025, and now we're having 2022, then we are definitely already uh, behind. Mm, and sort of speaking a bit into the scoops, because um, I, I know that you mentioned that, um, which you also touched upon now, that you know half of the Nordic companies don't place any requirements on their suppliers even when it comes to reducing emissions. And I mean, this needs to, to be adjusted, of course. And, and what would you say this is a sign of? What we know from the report is that, uh, of course, costs of uh, mm. you know we're get, get, getting these numbers, but also um, lots of companies are saying that it's complex, mm. and this is where Upturn really has a role to play, and we want to take part in in, in in solving this problem because we believe, of course, we live off technologies, but we mm. believe that technologies can can support. Uh, these companies in getting more visibility, more transparency. Uh, they can sort of like uh, align their objectives of running their business. It's not only about cost, sustainability, it's also about risk uh, and cash. Um, so uh, this, uh, you could say, multi-modeling approach is, is, is something that technology can help uh, um, support. Mm. Um, and that is essential to bring down the, the complexity. Mm. So initially what we're saying is that there is a complexity to it, but utilizing um, different kinds of tools, for example, what Optilon has, yes. is a way to navigate that yeah. complexity and yeah. actually get an overall um, yeah. picture of it and really exactly. be able to drive yeah. um, We also heard Peter say that you need to go from more global to more local yeah. uh, supply chains. Even that, if you were a supply chain leader out there, you know that if you had to add uh, supply chain complexity to the existing uh, you know, a type of supply chains. We all know that complexity is rising. And on the other hand, you still have to continue mm. measuring and uh, working, uh, making progress on your sustainability uh, uh, KPIs. I mean, it's contradicting, mm. right? Mm. So uh, there's a big task out there. Mm. And for sure, technology can support the, the journey. And sort of looking at, at the, the report this year, was there anything that surprised you, whether it's, you know, in a positive or negative context? Um, actually, I was really glad to see that so many companies, four out of five companies, are actually working with sustainability targets. Mm. I was a little bit surprised that only 50% uh, actually do work with their emissions actively. Mm. Mm. It's a little bit worrying. Mm. And last but not least, to, to sort of at least give a tool to, to the viewers, what advice would you give? I mean, standing where we are now in, in, in the paradigm shift, in, in, in sort of the, the navigation towards sustainable thinking, being, working and living, mm. what advice would you give to sort of incentivize this? Um, 
my best advice is um, for, I mean, uh, we, we come out of a very pragmatic uh, approach in Optilon, and this is also what, what the advice is to supply chain leaders out there. We, um, we, we must measure mm. to act better. Mm. If we don't measure, if we don't have a structured approach to mm. actually uh, captivating the data, mm. uh, then we have difficulties acting. If we have difficulties acting, will not be solving any problem. So, yeah, my take on this is, and Optilon's take is, if you measure better, you can also act better. Mm. But um, as I uh, also mentioned before, you can download the report. There are lots of learnings in mm. there, uh, and I'm sure the link is already available uh, in in the chat. Uh, otherwise, you can find them mm. on our web page under resources and sustainability. And uh, yeah, if you follow the Optilon LinkedIn page, I'm sure you can find uh, the great articles and also graphs from the report already highlighted. Mm. Alice, thank you so much for conveying that about the report. And hopefully there will be even more progression um, when you do the report during next year. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you.